over the last few weeks, the federal government has passed a number of employment-related laws that came about as a result of COVID-19's effect on the economy and all of the shutdowns that have subsequently occurred at the state and local level. Um, I want to talk about two of these uh, in the interest of getting employers more familiarized with their obligations. Uh, the first one is called the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act. You may be familiar with this concept. Uh, some states have already enacted paid sick leave laws, but this is the first time the federal government has enacted one, and it's limited in scope to just COVID-19 related sickness absences, um, but it is unprecedented for the federal government, so it's interesting uh, to see that they've gone this route. Now, there are six situations when an employee can take advantage of the paid sick leave under COVID-19. And also, just as a reminder, this applies only to employers who have 500 or less employees. And there are also situations where if it's a particularly small employer, maybe 50 or, or less employees, um, and providing this sort of paid sick leave would um, jeopardize the business operations of the company, they're exempted from having to um, comply with this uh, paid sick leave act. Nevertheless, for most of the employers, they're going to have to, that are 500 or less, they're going to have to comply. And there are six situations when it would apply. First is when your employee is subject to a federal, state, or local quarantine or isolation order related to COVID-19. And at this moment, that is nearly everybody. So um, that, that encompasses a lot of potential em employees. And so if your employee is unable to come to work or unable to telework, as a result of a quarantine order, they are very likely um, eligible for this paid sick leave. Um, the next situation is when the employee has been advised by a healthcare provider to self-quarantine due to concerns related to COVID-19. So it may be that they actually have COVID-19, or it may be that they're suspected of having COVID-19, but if a healthcare provider tells them to self-quarantine or isolate themselves, then they're eligible under this law. Uh, the third option is when the employee is actually experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 and is actively seeking a medical diagnosis. So this would include employees who haven't actually been diagnosed yet, but they are looking for it and they have those symptoms. The fourth option is when an employee is caring for an individual who is subject to an order that we talked about in the first option. So when they have a, you know, a quarantine, um, it maybe it's, it's not affect the quarantine isn't affecting your employee, but it's affecting a member of the person's family who they're caring for. Um, then they also get to take advantage of the Employee Paid Sick Leave Act. Fifth is when the employee is caring for his or her son or daughter whose school or place of care has been closed due to COVID-19 or whose child care provider uh, is unavailable due to a COVID-19 related circumstance. Um, and then finally, six is when the employee is experiencing any other substantially similar condition specified by the Secretary of HHS. So substantially similar to COVID-19. And that's a big, broad umbrella term, um, and sort of meant to, as a catch-all, essentially. So one of the interesting things about the Paid Sick Leave Act with respect to COVID is that it applies regardless of how long an employee has actually worked for an employer. So if they started working yesterday and then are suddenly subject to a quarantine order or any one of those other six uh, options that was delineated at the beginning of this video, then, you know, it applies. So be aware of that. Uh, there's no limit, you know, if they just started working, you know, it's, uh, it's going to apply if any of the situations arise for that particular employee. Now, healthcare providers and emergency responders are actually excluded from the Employee Paid Sick Leave Act, the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act. Um, it's a little counterintuitive, uh, but the, the legislation and then the implementing regulations state very clearly that Healthcare providers are not subject to the Paid Sick Leave Act. It doesn't mean that an employer can, can not give the option and pay out the paid sick leave to healthcare providers, but they're not required to under the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act, and they won't get a penalty for not doing so. And then finally, one really important thing to remember as an employer and an employee, uh, if the employer shuts down operations because of COVID, um, or there is just simply no work for the employee, then they are not eligible for paid sick leave. So it really only, it really is only applicable where the employer continues operations and you know, has work available for the employee and the employee can't do it um, because of the quarantine or because of, the, because of their symptoms or, or because they're caring for someone else. So remember that 
uh, if you're an employer that if you are shut down, um, then paid sick leave does not apply to your employees. So a big question, obviously, is how many hours do we get for employees who take this paid sick leave? If they're full time, 80, they get 80 hours, you know, that basically takes into account two 40 hour weeks. Um, if you're part time, you get the average of the hours you typically perform in a week. Um, over a two week period. So if you typically do 15 hours a week as a part-time employee, then you're entitled to 30 hours uh, of paid sick leave under the act. For money, the amount, the actual amounts, um, you basically get the greater of your regular pay rate um, or minimum wage. Um, but it's important to remember that this is capped at $511 per day and $5,110 in the aggregate. So you can't as an employee taking paid sick leave, you're not going to be able to get more than $5,110 from your employer. And that it's important to also to remember that that degree, the, uh, the $510 a day uh, degree of paid sick leave is applicable only to when it's the employee who's personally suffering the, in the inhibition related to, to COVID-19. So if the employee is personally under a quarantine order or they're personally experiencing symptoms or they're seeking a diagnosis and can't go into work because they think they have COVID-19, um, they get the $510 a day. If the employee is taking care of a relative or doing uh, or is under one of those other um, sort of secondary uh, reasons for, for getting paid sick leave that doesn't necessarily apply to them personally, but they're taking care of someone who's affected by COVID-19, then the max they can get per day is $200 per day. Uh, and I believe it's 2000 in the aggregate. Yeah, 2000 in the aggregate. So remember that uh, there are different tiers depending on the type of leave being taken. Another limitation that employers need to be aware of is that they cannot force or require an employee to use paid leave, other types of paid leave provided by the employer before, the, or before that employee uses the paid leave available under this act. So if they have vacation time or if the employer has uh, its own paid sick leave policy, they can't, the employee cannot be forced to take that leave first and then take the paid sick leave from, the, from this act. Instead, they're permitted to take the, the Employee Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act time first. And if they need to bleed into that sort of uh, banked paid sick time that they may have or vacation time after that, that's when they can be required to take it. Now, the penalties for the employers here, if they fail to pr properly or adequately provide the sick leave or if they don't pay the right amount to the employee, um, they're the same penalties that they're subject to under the FLSA, so civil fines, things like that. So the employers need to be aware of that. The second law that came down that I want to talk about in this video is the Emergency Family Medical Leave Expansion Act. This is sort of, as the title suggests, an expansion on FMLA, which was, has been in existence for quite some time. This basically requires uh, employers to provide expanded paid family and medical leave to eligible employees who are unable to work because that, that employee is caring for his or her son or daughter whose school or place of care is closed due to COVID-19. Um, or, if, you know, the, the employee that you have, maybe they have a, a child care provider typically come in and take care of the child while they're at work. Um, but maybe that child care provider is subject to a quarantine order or has come down with symptoms of COVID themselves and can no longer come in to take care of the child, that's when this applies. So this is that, again, situation where the employee has to care for another individual who's being affected by COVID-19. They're not necessarily themselves affected. So the duration of the Emergency Family Medical Leave Expansion Act is actually 12 weeks. Uh, the first two are unpaid, and then the remaining, the following 10 are paid out at two thirds of the employee's rate of pay uh, or $200, and they're capped at $10,000 in the aggregate. Now, if, you, if your employee hasn't used any of his or her emergency paid sick leave act time, and then has to take time under this Family Medical Leave Expansion Act, um, instead of having those first two weeks be unpaid, they can actually use that paid sick leave time towards the uh, first two weeks, and then they'll be able to have all 12 weeks paid out um, at the eligible rates. So be aware of that and uh, you know, in, inform your employee uh, as the situation or the case may be. And again, with, with the EFMLEA, um, that's a mouthful, uh, but with this particular act, it's again, healthcare providers are exempt. So if you have 
someone who fits that definition as an employee, they're not necessarily eligible for this. Again, it doesn't mean that you cannot provide this to your healthcare providers as an employer, but you're not required to in the same way that you are for other employees. And uh, that's the that's the gist of it. That's the basics of these acts. Um, I'm sure in the days and weeks ahead that these will be expanded upon and tweaked and, and um, better articulated and refined. But for now, that's, I think, uh, you know, gives you a good, a good um, baseline of knowledge. And if there's any questions that you may have, feel free to contact us over at Taylor English. We've been looking into these things for a while. And we've got a great team that's ready to answer your questions. Thanks.